When we work in healthcare, making changes can be hard. Um, we like our status quo. We don't like to change and mix things up a whole lot in practice. But sometimes we know we have a problem and we need to use evidence, research evidence to make a change. Um, it's difficult to know what to do first and how we should proceed in incorporating this research into our, our current practice. Therefore, there are several different models for evidence-based practice implicate implementation, excuse me, in practice. And so I'm really going to go over two today, two of the more common ones that you see in articles that are published. And these two are what I personally find to be some of the most user-friendly. So the first one we're going to look at is the Iowa model for evidence-based practice to promote quality care, the Iowa model for short. Basically, this one's kind of like an algorithm. You start at the top, you follow the, the cues, and as you go, it lets you know exactly what you should be doing in your next step. The top of the boxes uh, at the top kind of tell us what our triggers are for putting this chain of actions into play. Basically, we have some kind of trigger. It's either going to be a problem-focused trigger, which means we have some issues in our workplace. It could be quality and risk issues like increased levels of patient falls or higher levels of CAUTI than we should have or CLABC or any of that other alphabet soup that you hear about during your monthly meetings. That's obviously an issue and we need to use evidence to fix those problems. Sometimes we get new equipment or we, get, um, we hear things at conferences and we're like, oh my gosh, we're not doing that. That's knowledge focused triggers. Either of those triggers can cascade into these other actions. The first question I think is quite unique to this model. This is not all a feature of all models. However, I think it's important. Is this topic a priority for your workplace? You notice in, the, in that every diamond is a decision point. It's a question that you have to ask and answer. So if the topic that you have chosen to pursue is not a big priority for your workplace, it's going to be hard to get the ball rolling and to get people invested and on board with this change. So you may want to consider other triggers or you may have to go through some extra steps to figure out how you're going to get people invested and fired up about this project. Um, a lot of times if it is a risk or quality initiative, there is, it is a priority because we have money attached to this. So we have to fix these issues and stop the bleeding, more or less. So then you're going to form a team because no one person needs to be doing evidence-based practice changes alone. You're going to assemble relevant research, which means you're going to look through libraries and all kinds of databases to find what does the research say about this problem? How have others fixed this problem? You know, is there a certain intervention that research has shown to be better at solving this problem? Then you're going to critique and synthesize the research. So we don't just read an article and be like, okay, that's a great study. You know, studies have issues. All, there's no such thing as a perfect study. So we have to read it and understand, are the holes in this study so great that we cannot use it to base our practice upon. If it's that weak of a study, we should not be using it to um, for change policies and practices. And then we go through, okay, is there even enough research out there? If there's not, then we need to go do some studies possibly. Um, and then you see as it goes, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but basically you're gonna continue down repiloting this change. We don't wanna just like jump on board and do this change on every unit and department in your hospital. Usually one or two, we will pilot to make sure it's working and feasible. We'll fix any kinks in the process and then we'll roll it out to a bigger um, group of departments. And we're going to continue to monitor the data to see if we've made any improvements. If you have any um, experience with quality improvement, you know that this looks very similar to the quality improvement process. It really is. You know, the Plan, Do, Study, Act, um, that's very similar to this process. So the Iowa model is commonly used to help um, promote evidence-based changes in the workplace. Another type of model that is out there is called the Johns Hopkins model. It's specific to nursing, and it's their evidence-based practice model within their school of nursing. And a lot of people have jumped on board 
because it's super user friendly and there's a lot of resources available to us as nurses to use to spearhead the EBP changes. Now you notice that it has three things all interlinked, practice, research, and education. You can't have one without the others. You have to be able to inform your practice with your own education and with research. Okay, and research is centered upon the education you have and the practice you have. So it all goes together, as well as external and internal factors within and outside of your organization. You know, regulations, the Joint Commission, other accreditors tell us what we have to do in the workplace. So we can't discount that those are going to drive our practice. But also, the staffing and equipment and our environment within our hospitals also it make a play a part. This is the crux of the Johns Hopkins model. This tells you what all you have to do in order to make practice improvements. And it all starts with inquiry, asking questions. Okay, we have a problem. What is the best way to fix this problem? So we start with a question, a practice-based question. Then we look in the research evidence to find what does the research say about this question? How do studies answer this question? Then we translate that into practice using guidelines, just like the clinical practice guidelines we looked at in another video. So we have to translate the evidence from all these various articles to succinct step-by-step -step recommendation one, recommendation two, etc. And the whole time we're doing that, we're learning and we're improving our practice, but our outcome is going to be on our best practices. Whatever the research says is the best practice set is what should be in our policy and procedure. And as we do that, we're going to continue to find more issues and we go back to inquiry and start the whole process over again. So this is a very handy tool as well. And we're going to be using a lot of the Johns Hopkins resources in this course because they are user friendly and widely used in the nursing practice. And so just to show you more of a words step by step, this is the step-by-step -step EBP process according to the Johns Hopkins model. Um, well, the, part of defining the problem is first of all having a team in place to be able to say what is our department's biggest issue we're facing right now. We might have five problems. We can't solve all five at the same time. So we have to focus on what is the number one priority at this point. Define it, know exactly what it is, and then ask a question. And then all of the rest of the steps center on answering that question. So that is the essence of what evidence-based practice models do. There are others out there, but they basically provide you with a roadmap that tells you how to get from point A, the problem you're experiencing, to point Z, the solving the problem, fixing your policies and practices so you are actually doing evidence-based practice in your workplace.